Super Mario 64 is one of the most iconic games in history, and a massive part of a bunch of childhoods including my own, though for me it was the DS version. Regardless, I've wanted to jump into the world of 3D games for quite some time, so as a way of learning more about Unity and challenging myself, I decided to attempt to recreate as much of Mario 64 in just 64 hours. So without further ado, let's jump right into day one of development. Alrighty, so for the first day of development, I wanted to solely focus on recreating the core mechanics of Mario 64, specifically in relation to Mario himself. So, a majority of the first day was dedicated to creating Mario's movement within Unity. The first thing I actually did to prepare for this was actually downloading Mario's model from the models resource and uploading it to a website known as Mixamo in order to get it rigged. After this, I downloaded the rigged model alongside some test animations and opened up Unity with a blank project. The first thing I did within Unity was actually setting up the basic animation system. I did this with Unity's built-in animation controller, and it was really easy to use. I basically made a few nodes for each animation, and then had them change depending on Mario's state using a few booleans. Next up, I had to work on the actual movement code, which again, was much easier than I anticipated. I first set up an action map within Unity's input action system, which allowed me to map everything to both a keyboard layout and a controller layout. After this, I assigned Mario a character controller object and began programming a script to get him moving. To actually get movement working, I first set up an awake method which grabs all of the components required like the player input, character controller, and animator right at the start of the game. Alongside this, since the script has to communicate to the animator, I set up some hashes in order to do so. After this, I created two methods to detect input and animation as well. For movement, I simply utilized the InputAction.CallbackContext method, which allowed the input to be read from either a keyboard or gamepad and move the character controller appropriately. As for animation, I simply made a few if statements detecting if certain inputs were being pressed, and if so, it would activate the corresponding hash, and here's what all of that looks like. Basically, in this build, you could move around as Mario, and he'd animate appropriately if you were idle, walking, or running. I also added gravity, but I won't bore you with all those details. Next up, I had to get jumping to work. Without going into too much complex detail, the way a jump works in most games is basically like a parabola. You work your way up, peek at a point, and then descend. In most Mario games as well, the longer you hold the jump button, the higher you jump. So, I implemented this as well. And you can see the difference between tapping and holding the jump button quite easily. After this, I was tired of working with a static camera angle, so I got a camera working. The way I did this was by using a super helpful add-on known as Cinemachine, and specifically the Free Look Camera. Within the camera, I was able to set a follow and look at object, so I chose Mario and allowed the camera to detect input from the input action set up earlier. And boom, we had a working camera. Next up, I had to decide what mechanic I wanted to add next for Mario. I obviously wouldn't have enough time to do all of this, so what better mechanic to spend time on than his iconic triple jump? So, to get the triple jump working, I first went ahead and opened up Blender to create some basic poses for the first and second jump, and for the final jump, I made a quick animation of Mario somersaulting and eventually opening back up again. Then, back over in Unity, I went ahead and added these animations to the animation controller, and opened back up the main movement script. In here, I created a few dictionaries to store each of the jump's gravity and initial jump velocity values. You can see here basically that the jump height increases by 50 for the second jump, and by 100 for the third jump. After this, I modified the jumping script to take into account a variable known as jump count. This variable is quite self-explanatory as it keeps track of which jump is currently happening. And depending on it, a certain velocity would be applied and a corresponding animation and sound would be played. And here's what all of that looks like. I also made it so that if you were on the ground for more than 0.25 seconds, your jump counter would be reset back to zero. Otherwise, you'd be able to triple jump no matter what. After this, I made a simple coin model in Blender, imported it into Unity, and made it constantly spin around using a very simple script. Plus, I made it so that whenever Mario touches the coin, it would just disappear. Finally, to wrap up day one, I went ahead and made some Goombas. The way I did this was quite simple. Firstly, I imported the model into Unity and gave it a collider and character controller. Then, I simply made a script that detects if Mario was within a certain range of it to rotate and move towards him. 
Then, within Mario's script, I made a collision checker method that detected if Mario jumped on the Goomba, and made it so you'd hop off of it a bit, and that the Goomba would simply disappear and play a sound. And after creating the Goombas, I called it a day as I already did quite a bit. So, to recap, for day one, I created movement and animation for Mario, camera movement, both a jumping and triple jump mechanic, coins, and Goombas. So with all of that, let's move on to what I did on day two. So continuing onwards, the first thing I did on day two was actually creating a model of the pink bob -omb. as in the original game, it was simply a circular PNG that just rotated based on where you were at. Alongside this, I imported the star model into the game, and made it so whenever you stomped on a Goomba, some poof particles would appear adding a bit of flair to the game. Next up, I wanted to include an explosion and screech shake effect specifically for the bob -omb's, so I made a quick particle system and employed my good friend Daquavius Bingleton to be the honorary test subject for this, and it worked! Oh yeah, I also added the ability for you to floss because I was having way too much fun with the animations earlier. Anyways, what's that in the top corner? Why, it's bob -omb Battlefield! I went ahead and added a pipe that goes from the testing area over to bob -omb Battlefield for ease of access and I decided that I'd solely focus on replicating the stars on this map as much as possible. So, the first star to replicate here was of course the one that you get from defeating King bob -omb. So, once again, I firstly had to modify his original model, as he originally looked like this, but after a few minutes, he was looking all big and round like he always is. And then I personally slapped him over into Unity, where I made it so we could actually fight him. And the way you do so is like this. Then, a star would spawn, and upon grabbing it, your controls would be disabled for a brief period as Mario dances in celebration. After implementing this, I went ahead and created the red coin mechanic, which was really, really easy. Basically, I made a red coin counter, and made it so that whenever Mario touches one, it adds to the counter and plays the right sound. Also, once the counter is equal to 8, a star would spawn, and the counter would be reset back to 0. So after adding that, I went ahead and added the Chain Chomp Gate Star, and made it so that when you touch the Chain Chomp, My he'd also just spontaneously combust and destroy the gate as well. After finishing the Chain Chomp, I had to call it a day here because I had to go to my actual job, so to recap day 2, I basically expanded on a few mechanics here and added bob -omb Battlefield, Red Coins, and the ability for stars to be spawned, King bob -omb, the Chain Chomp, and Dequavius Bingleton. So, with all of that, let's jump right into day three of this challenge. Alrighty, so for the final day of this challenge, I first started off by creating the bob -omb object and essentially reused the Goomba AI script, but made it so that if it touches you, it just explodes. After adding in the bob -omb, I went ahead and actually filled up bob -omb Battlefield with Goombas, bob -ombs, and coins, and I think I replicated it quite well. Next up, I decided to add another really easy and simple start to this game, being the one that's on the floating island. Basically, I created the yellow exclamation mark box with a collider on the bottom of it, and detected if Mario was jumping and colliding with it. Pretty simple stuff. However, as of right now, there really wasn't a way to get on top of the floating island, so I went ahead and made a few cannon objects simply by making an empty game object with a box collider, and placing these within the cannons. Then, within Mario's script, I added it so that if Mario collides with one of these invisible cannon objects, he'd be exploded into the air, allowing him to land on the island. I know this isn't exactly like in Mario 64, but this was a good compromise in my opinion. Next up, I decided to work on replicating the UI for the game, which I did so by basically taking renders of Mario's head, a coin, and a star, giving each of those a corresponding text object, which would be updated with their proper values. I didn't technically need the life's counter since I didn't implement that system, but it looks more complete this way. After completing the UI and adding in some background music, I decided to call this challenge complete at this point, as I had a life to attend to, and yeah. So with it being completed, I went ahead and compiled a build for Windows and WebGL, meaning that yes, you can indeed play this entirely within your browser. There are some slight graphic downgrades, but it's still completely playable. In total, there are 4 stars from bob -omb Battlefield to collect, and 3 from the test area, so go give it a try and get all the stars. I do recommend if you have a controller to play with one, as it just feels way more natural. Like usual, there's a link in the description which takes you directly to the game's page. 
Overall, I really enjoyed working on this project a lot more than my usual games, as it just felt so refreshing to work within a 3D environment. And I think for a fun, non-serious test project, it looks and feels quite polished. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe! And if you're interested in any of my other games, be sure to go check those out as well. As always, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one!